Carousels on a website are a great way to show a bunch of images in a single line on your website that kind of slide or scroll across your screen as the user views. If you're new here, my name is Rebecca from Rebecca Grace Designs and I help you push past the limitations of Squarespace using code. In today's video, we're going to talk all about carousels, how to add them in Squarespace, how to get them to auto scroll, how to use them as a testimonial slider, and also how to get them to look great on mobile. Here we have a Squarespace 7.1 site, and I'm gonna go through and show you the different ways that you can add a carousel. So there's two different ways you can add it depending on what you want the content of that carousel to be. If you want a series of images, you're going to click to edit the page, and we're going to use a gallery section. So wherever you would like that section to be, you're gonna click add section, and then under images, you're going to click one of the gallery sections here. It doesn't really matter because you can change it afterwards. And then inside edit gallery, you're going to add all of the images that you would like to have in the carousel. Feel free to also add a description and a link if you want them to click through to um, somewhere else. When they click on that image, you can add a click through link there. Then under edit section, you're going to add a gallery slideshow and you can choose which one of these you like. I'm going to choose a slideshow reel. So I think it looks most like the typical carousel that you're looking for. You can either choose full inset, which brings it in a little bit um, to wherever your margins are or full bleed, which means it's going to go all the way from one side of the page to the other. You can then choose the height that you would like the controls are these arrows here. You can choose to have them on the side, overflow side, which means it's just on the outside where the images are underneath. You can have it be below, um, and then also below left, right, or center if you want them beside each other there. You can choose whether you want them to crop the images or not. And you can also choose to show your captions. So those descriptions that you wrote, if you choose captions here, that's how they will appear. They'll show underneath. Under colors, you can then choose the color theme that you would like to be in the background. Your other option is to use a summary block. So this is for if you're trying to do a carousel of your products or blog pages or any of your collections that you have on your site, you can add a summary block to display those. So in this section here, I'm going to click to add a block and I'm going to choose a summary block. And if you want it to go side to side, you can drag it to go all the way across the screen if you like, or you can choose to have it go just where the margin is on the page. Then under the pencil icon, you're gonna select the collection you want to do a carousel for. So if you have a blog or you have a store page, you're going to click on those. And then depending what you click on, you're gonna choose what sort of items and descriptions you want in here. So you can choose to have the category and tags show. You can choose to filter those items by a specific tag or category. And under design, you can choose how you want it to display. So we're going to choose carousel. You can choose the total of number of items you want in the carousel. And then items per row is how many are displayed. So for instance, I can choose to have 30 products in my carousel, but only three are displayed at a time. Choose the aspect ratio and the size of the text. This is the header text. I usually choose not to have one because I like to use my own kind of description at the top. And then you can choose how much you want to display. So you can choose to use the title, um, the image if you want, the excerpt, the price, you can choose what you want to display and what you don't. For products, you can also enable a quick, quick view and so on. So you can go through and choose how exactly you want it to design. But again, the summary block is for doing a carousel of your collection pages, whether that be blog, um, events, products, and so on or images are a gallery section. A question that I get asked all the time is, how do I get these to autoplay? I want them to continuously scroll as people are watching and my users not have to click on the arrows in order to get it to scroll. 
So inside of the Squarespace editor, there is no way to turn on auto scroll for both the summary block and the gallery reel section. If you're in one of the other slideshow sections, such as slideshow full, there is an auto play, um, but for some reason for the reel, there is not. Um, so in order to get it to do that, you do have to use code. So what you're going to do is go to settings, advanced code injection, and you're going to place the code in the footer. For the summary block, it's very similar for both, um, just the selector changes, but starting off with the summary block, we always want to have a comment on the top so we remember what this code is for. We have script tags because we're writing JavaScript and a function. And what we're doing is we're declaring a variable that we're calling next arrow summary. And I'm having it select the um, next arrow in the summary block using its selector. I then create a function called click next summary and have it select this arrow and click. And then I've set a time interval for 3000 milliseconds or every three seconds. So what this is going to do is automatically click on that next arrow every three seconds. And once it gets to the end, Squarespace does take a little bit of time and then it does flip back to the beginning. Let's take a look. So I'm gonna click save. And you can see my summary bot clicks through. Once it's at the end, it takes a minute to register that it's at the end and then it will flip back to the beginning to start over again. Very similar process for our gallery blocks, but we need a different selector. So for our gallery blocks, again, we have a comment here. We're selecting the arrow using its selector, saying we want the gallery real control, and then we want it to be the next button. And then we're gonna have it click next with an interval. So let's click save. And now you see our gallery will continue every three seconds to click to the next image. And then again, at the end, it takes a moment for Squarespace to register that it's at the end and it will start again. For either of these, if you wanna change the number of seconds, you're just gonna change the 3000 to however many seconds you would like. Now, a heads up, these codes do not work well together in the Squarespace editor. Um, so if you have them both copied and pasted um, below each other, and what happens is Squarespace doesn't like that they're clicking at the same time and you end up having something like this where it opens up the editor and it starts to look a bit funky. So if that's the case and you want both, I suggest that you put it in their pages code injection instead so that you don't have that annoying thing pop up all the time um, confusing the Squarespace editor. There are more customizations you can do with this if you have multiple summary blocks on a page. The code as is will only select the very first one, not multiple. And if you wanna turn it off on mobile, there is some more customizations and code that you need to add in. Um, and this is included inside of my Encyclopedia of Code subscription. A really cool effect that I'll see people use with the carousels is to create testimonials. Now you could use a gallery block to do this, by creating a nice graphic of a person's image and their text and have it just scroll through all of the different testimonials in here. The main drawback to this is depending on how much text there is, it may not look the best on mobile. So I wanna show you a really cool way to do that using a summary block. Now, because a summary block is a collection, we first need to design a collection that's for our testimonial. So what you're going to do is in your not linked section, you're going to add a blog. Doesn't matter which one you choose here because nobody's actually going to see the blog itself. So you can just choose any of them and we're gonna call it testimonials. Now in the settings, the first thing we want to do is go to SEO and turn off all pages in this collection because we don't want these to show up on Google or in searches. So we're just gonna turn that off and click save. Each of these blog posts is going to be a testimonial, but the only places you need to fill out is the thumbnail image here, which is going to be the picture of the person. Um, if you're going to have a picture of your testimonials, you're going to include that here. And then their actual testimonial in the excerpt. So 
So here is my testimonial. And then we have a picture that comes up. Let's choose a person. And then add their name if you would like, and whatever other information you want from them. And you're gonna do that for all of the testimonials that you want to include. Then you're going to go to the page you want to add the testimonial to. And you're gonna add the summary block just like we did before, but this time we're going to select our testimonial blog as the page that's gonna display in here. We wanna set the primary data to none, unless you want the date posted, that's okay. Under design, I'm going to set it to one item per row, and I'm gonna turn it off so it's only the image and the excerpt that are selected. And I'm just gonna resize this. it only shows one testimonial at a time. And then there is a ton of different CSS codes you can use in order to style this further. So let's take a look at a few options. The first thing I wanna do is make this so it's not clickable. I don't want them to be able to click on this and go to that blog we created. I only created that blog just so I can display it in here. So I'm going to use this code here. I've chosen the summary, thumbnail, outer container, and A means links. I've made the pointer events none and the cursor default. So no clicking on the image or this. They can still click on the arrows to go back and forth, but they can't click on the image or the excerpt. So there's no way they're going to get to that blog unless you provide them with the URL. We can also then use some CSS to style this a bit further, such as making the text a bit bigger. So to do that, we're going to use the selector summary. Excerpt P and change the font size to let's say 1.5 REM. Maybe a little bit smaller. There we go. I might want to even make a little bit of space here so I can give it a padding top of let's say two view width. Give it a bit more space. Um, and so on. I can also do a whole bunch of customizations to the image itself, such as making it a circle, bigger, smaller. Um, those customizations and are all included inside of my Encyclopedia of Code subscription. I'm going to click Save. And I've also seen people do this where they don't include the image at all. Um, I have it on my site where I have this in its own section. I've created a background image with quotation marks. And then I have just the text and um, just the excerpt playing as it scrolls side to side. So there's lots of different fun things you can do with this. It's just another unique way of showing testimonials. And then when you wanna add more testimonials, you can just add them to the blog and you don't need to add them to the gallery block or as an image um, on all of the pages of your site. As long as you have the summary block and you update the blog post, it will automatically update all of the summary blocks that you have on your site, which is another benefit of using the summary block in this case. And that is it. That is how you add carousels to your Squarespace website. If you like this tutorial, make sure you like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Otherwise, sign up for the freebie in my footer so you can be notified the next time another tutorial is posted.